Hey guys, it's Top of Bricks here. Welcome to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the biggest LEGO Harry Potter set ever made, at least in terms of price, and that is the Hogwarts Express set, $500. And we are getting a big display set, 45 bags and over 5,000 pieces to make this enormous set. Now, I think this is the biggest set in terms of bags. I don't think any other set apart from the Titanic beats this when it comes to bag count. We are getting 45 bags. The Titanic came with 46. For comparison, Diagon Alley only came with 20 or 21 technically. And just, it is so long the build for the set. It took me around 18 hours to actually build the set, 18 and a half hours. And the entire build process is up as two individual live streams on my channel, which I recorded over the last couple of days. So now that's out of the way, let's get into this set. Okay, so this set is absolutely huge, as I'm sure you'd know. So I'm going to have trouble filming all of this, so I'm just going to have to film it in different sections. So let's get into the minifigures first, and then we'll show you each section of the set afterwards. Okay, so taking a look at the Harry figures in the set, we get four of them. From left to right, we have the adult Harry, which is from the epilogue 19 years later. We then have Harry from the Philosopher's Stone, Harry from the half of Prince, and then Harry from the Prisoner of Azkaban on the far right. As you can see, they all have back printing, so that's really cool, and also back face printing, my favourite figure being the adult Harry here. Okay, so taking a look at Hermione now, we only have two of these figures in this set, one from the Prisoner of Azkaban, and one from the Philosopher's Stone where she is wearing her house, well, not her house rose, because she hasn't been sorted yet, her school robes and the one from the Prison of Azkaban has some nice multicolored lines on the back of her torso and the front of her torso which is really really cool and probably the favorite out of the two Hermione figures unfortunately no adult Hermione here in the set but I am happy with the two Hermione figures we do get now onto Ron we obviously have one with the dirt on his nose from the Philosopher's Stone, that's really really cool and the other one is from the Prisoner of Azkaban again both have back printing and both have uh, double sided faces to go along with him. Okay so now onto the other students we have Luna Lovegood and two random generic students one for Ravenclaw and one for Hufflepuff. In my opinion these two uh, minifigures should have been replaced with adult Ron and Hermione but that's just my opinion. I think a lot of people agree um, with that but it's cool that they added these figures to include diversity but they would have been good just to be you know added alongside the set with Ron and Hermione in adult form not have those figures taken out to replace them with those two figures Luna Lovegood is looking as detailed as ever and then we come on to Remus Lupin and a Dementor so the figure for Lupin is unique the Dementor is you know the same Dementor we see in the other sets uh, including the previous Hogwarts Express set we also got a Dementor there and the double sided face print for uh, Lupin has got a werewolf sort of like half werewolf sort of look. He has got some back printing as well where he's got a hood. Uh, let's, let, let's have that focus. There you go. You can see the face print now. Uh, he's sort of like mid transformation into his werewolf uh, pose. The Dementor has not got any back printing on his head or his torso. You can see on his head uh, no back printing whatsoever. He's just completely blank and the same goes for his torso as well. So that's those two figures. So then we come to the rest of the epilogue figures. We have a Ginny Weasley in adult form, which just looks absolutely fantastic. Looks exactly like her. We then have Lily Luna Potter. We then have Albus Severus Potter and James Sirius Potter. Now all of these figures have back printing every single one of them i really love the detail for these minifigures in this set unfortunately not much leg printing going on with many of these figures to be honest with you but at least we see some detailed back printing to go along with these figures so in this set as well we get two trolley carts which go on the station they can't exactly fit in the train but we have one with some potions and an owl uh, with a gray sort of uh, trunk and obviously on the right we have a brown one now inside these trunks we have some panels with some stickers on them to represent some clothes we also get an 8 by 16 tile in this set which is light tan just like the last collector's edition harry potter set this time instead of a letter though we actually get a ticket for the hogwarts express also the plaque that i got on the station of my hogwarts express set 
actually has a typo on it where it says King Cross instead of King's Cross, so that's something to know. Um, with the actual station itself, it's not the biggest station in the world, it is quite small. There are some nice details with the station though, such as the quote tiles at the top saying, Dad, what if I'm putting Slytherin, which is obviously an iconic quote from the Deathly Hollows Part 2 film. There is also a lot of studs and jumper plates dotted all along the station, so you can put figures wherever you want and customise the scene uh, as much as you want if it's a scene based on the Deathly Hollows or one of the earlier films. Now what's good about this station is it can be basically placed anywhere along the model as well. I prefer to put it in front of the coal cart so it only blocks the coal cart and not the rest of the train so the whole of the locomotive and the passenger car is basically kept in view. Now the track is a very boring build, when you build this you would see what I mean, it's very boring and very repetitive, you're basically building the same thing over and over and over again but once it's done you basically place the train on the track like this so you put the locomotive on some stilts which keeps it levitated and allows you to have the play function where you can spin the wheels and see the piston rods move and it not being basically uh, succumbed by its own weight um, so yeah this is what the piston rod movement looks like you just basically spin this little golden thing at the top uh, this exact piece you spin that around with a lever and the piston rods do move along and uh, this set is just absolutely huge and I mean it's absolutely enormous it's just unreal it's 118 centimeters long the detail on the locomotive the coal cart the passenger cart it's just unreal it's a shame the station isn't that big but obviously like I said before if you have the station the entire width of the train then you're basically going to block the entire train and if you displayed it the other way around you'd just be blocking the entire station with the train so as you can see with the detail it is absolutely tremendous one thing to note about the sticker though is that it is two different stickers so if you don't put them right next to each other it is going to create a bit of a gap unfortunately but yeah the detail of this locomotive is absolutely insane and so with the coal cart the coal is actually built with studs and two by two round plates it's not like poured in black studs as you'd see in most of these mocks with the hoggers express where there is a fear of the coal basically falling out if you move it left and right or upside down that's not a fear here with the locomotive uh, sorry not the locomotive the passenger car it is absolutely huge um, it takes an entire instruction booklet on its own and it took me over six hours to build the uh, passenger car alone we have light bricks accessible from the top uh, which you press and you can actually light up the interiors from the three different movie scenes you can also take off the wall to see those in more detail and the same with the back aisle and we have a scene from the philosopher's stone prisoner of azkaban and half blood prince Okay, so that about wraps up the review for this video. Now, there are a lot of pros of this set and there are a lot of cons. I, as a Harry Potter fan first and foremost, am very happy with this set because we are getting references to the films all the way through the carriage and the platform. We are getting a large minifigure selection with a lot of the minifigures being unique. It's definitely not a perfect minifigure selection. We are missing adult uh, Hermione and Ron but we are getting a lot of nods and details towards the Harry Potter films in terms of the quote tiles and stuff like that, because that's what this set is, is uh, basically designed towards. The Harry Potter fan first and foremost, that is the priority here, and that is obvious in every single aspect of this set, it's for the Harry Potter fan only. And that's the issue. Lego had the opportunity to knock out two birds in one stone by pleasing both the Harry Potter community and the train community. However, they only managed to please the Harry Potter community largely. And that's because the train community wants certain things. They want it to be minifigure scale. This isn't minifigure scale. The locomotive is 10 wide and the carriage is 12 wide. That's too large. Uh, yeah, the 2018 one wasn't minifigure scale either. I give you that. That was only six wide, but a true minifigure scale um, Hogwarts Express would be around eight wide, I believe, after doing some research and getting some advice on that. So it should have been eight wide. Uh, also, it doesn't fit on LEGO's track system, so it is a complete display set. That's all this set is. It's a wow factor set. People walk in and go, wow, that is a display set. That is huge. That is awe inspiring. But that's all it gives. There is no interactive features which the training community wants. They want this to be something which goes on LEGO's track system that can be motorised 
and it's an addition to people's LEGO City and, LEGO, and people's LEGO train layout. But it's not that, so that's why the train community aren't happy with this set. Um, and again, it only really pleases the Harry Potter fans. So I want to make that clear of why this set is getting so much backlash. Do I think it's completely justified? To a degree, yeah, the criticisms are justified. But again, this is a this is an amazing set, especially for Harry Potter fans like me. And it's sort of understandable that for a $500 collector's edition Harry Potter set, that they would prioritize the Harry Potter fans. I completely get that. And I feel amongst those Harry Potter fans, people really like this set. Um, again, this is just, it's harder for the designers because they have to please both the train community and the Harry Potter community. And I guess that was that is difficult and it's a challenge, but they definitely didn't hit the mark in pleasing both communities. So that's basically the situation here with this set. Is it worth the $500? Again, it depends what camp you're in. For me, it is because I'm not a massive train fan. Um, like I like trains, but I'm not the biggest train fan in the world. Um, that's largely because I don't have the room to have a whole layout and stuff like that. I just don't have that room to really scratch that itch. So I've just sort of separated myself from that community. But if you are a train fan, it's definitely not worth spending $500 on the set. It's better spending $500 on making a really cool layout with three or four motorized play scale trains or minifigure scale trains that you can build custom or just buying other Lego trains on the market. And I think you're gonna have a lot more fun by doing that than buying this set. So it depends who you are as a person, if $500 is worth it. In terms of just volume of bricks, this is definitely worth the $500 because it took me 18 and a half hours to build. We're getting 45 bags of this set and over 5,000 pieces. Uh, my full 18 and a half hour build for this is actually being posted on this channel in, in the form of two uh, separate live streams. I'll leave a link for both of those live streams in the description down below. Also, I am going to mod this set to make this set slightly better. And if you want to see that, then definitely let me know down in the comment section below. I do plan to mod this. I've got quite a few ideas, up to five ideas of what I can do to mod this set. So yeah, make sure to comment your thoughts and opinions on this set and also some mod idea suggestions I should do for that video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you tomorrow for another Lego Harry Potter video. So I'll see you there.